Hello and welcome back to Good Vibes. I'm Martin False and joined by Debbie Cox DeNova. She had some great topics uh, the last few weeks. Everybody, I'm sure, was tuned in and listening. So, Debbie, another important topic. Yes. And this one I don't even know anything about, but overcoming imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, which, by the way, is also called imposter experience, imposter phenomenon. The thing is that calling it a syndrome makes it sound like it's rare, and it actually isn't. So even though a lot of people don't talk about it because the very nature of it is shame, about 70% of Americans report having symptoms of imposter syndrome, which is this feeling like I don't belong, like I'm a fraud. In fact, in doing the research around this, I came across this little cartoon, which was really interesting, and it's this animated character that wakes up with the color red. Okay, so he's red, mm -hmm. and he paints himself green, and then goes out into the world where everyone else is green as well. So all throughout the day, he's drinking liquid, and a little bit of red shows, and he's painting it back, right? It's raining, so he's where he has the umbrella, and a little bit drips on him, and he's painting it back. So all day long, making sure that no one sees that underneath he's actually not green. Mm -hmm. And he goes in front of a, a group of green other beings, and he shows off all of his... His, uh, his triumphs and his wins, and they all applaud. And then all of a sudden, a little sweat drips down, and it shows, and they're all like, oh, right? Yeah. And then one by one, they start to smudge away and see that they're, they're all different colors underneath, right? And so everyone is sort of playing the part of being mm -hmm. this color all together. So this actually speaks to what imposter syndrome is like because 70% of people are reporting it, and that actually probably is low because mm -hmm. the, the symptoms of imposter syndrome are four. Anxiety, mm -hmm. perfectionism, self-doubt, and fear of failure. So it's this thought that whatever I'm presenting to the world or whatever I have to offer is not worthy of what everybody else is doing, right? It's this thought of like, and actually people who are really bitten by imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. they will actually hide some of their their rewards and they'll diminish it because they'll feel like, well, I didn't really, mm -hmm. I didn't really uh, earn this fair and square or they'll find me out, right? Or they will actually, they, they, they simply have this feeling around other people that, oh, what I do is not enough. It's not, don't, don't look at it, don't read mm -hmm. this, don't look at my art, that kind of thing, okay? Now, psychology, a psychologist, Pauline Rose Clance, along with Susan Imes, was the first to start to study this. And what she noticed is that as a therapist, she would have patients from a university coming in, and all of these patients were exhibiting this feeling of, like, I don't belong in this master's program. And someone's going to find out. Some of them even thought that there may have been some sort of flaw in the admissions. Mm -hmm. And she remembered it being in graduate school and feeling the same way. So all of them sort of feeling together, like, I don't belong here. And this speaks to a phenomenon, a human phenomenon, called pluralis pluralistic ignorance. And it's this feeling that there is something flawed going on inside of me mm -hmm. and that no one else is experiencing it because no one else, everyone else is feeling it, right? But no one's talking about it. And so it leaves you with the feeling of loneliness. Mm -hmm. This is because we are viewing ourselves from the inside. So we know all of the imperfections. Mm -hmm. We know all the areas that we struggle. And we're viewing other people from the outside. And it's a much more edited and narrow view of them. So it kind of creates this separation and this gap. And there was a French philosopher in the 1600s who wrote, and I'm going to clean this up because I know this is a family program. Mm -hmm. But he was quoted as saying, kings and philosophers poop and so do ladies. Mm -hmm. And this is the idea that we kind of put people, and we can replace this without, without our celebrities, mm -hmm. politicians, CEOs, we put people up here, and we see their, the, the, what they want us to see of them, and we mm -hmm. can't, we never see them going to the bathroom, for mm -hmm. example. We know that we go to the bathroom, we mm -hmm. know where we struggle, we know our vulnerabilities, we know our compulsions, and we don't see that in all of them. So it creates this gap of like, I don't belong here. And so- We've always said that saying, we all put on our pants the same way. That's right, exactly. You know? And that really is what it is, exposing yourself to the fact that we're all the same. Mm -hmm. Underneath, we're all humans, that these vulnerabilities and compulsions are mm -hmm. a human thing. No one gets a pass on it. Isn't them. that the perfect pattern, though? Anyone watching is lying if they say when they go on first dates or second dates or third dates that they don't have the perfect camouflage. Right. But then the onion 
starts getting peeled back. Yes. And I think there's a, a level of appreciation when someone shows up authentically, when we can kind of see, they allow us to see the cracks and crevices mm -hmm. because it gives permission, just like in that little animated thing, it gives permission. One person wipes away the paint and says, me too, right? Mm -hmm. And then everyone else slowly starts doing it too. It's like, okay, it's safe now. And to recognize that like, okay, the, I'm not, there isn't this big gap between me and other people. Like this person puts on his pants mm -hmm. one leg at a time, just like everybody else, right? And even the most celebrated and the most, the people who intimidate you the most are struggling behind the scenes. And it can be really powerful, actually. One of the strategies is to actually expose yourself to maybe an autobiography or the backstory behind someone who intimidates you the most. So you can mm -hmm. see their humanity. Right. You can see all the things that they overcome and all the areas where they are actually just like you. Well, Johnny Carson used to say before he went out on The Tonight Show, everybody saw him as this icon. Yeah. He'd breathe in a paper bag. That's right. We talked about that. So yeah. it shows that he's human too. But he was nervous as could be. Absolutely. <laughs> and so what it, the most important take, take away from this is that you are not alone in mm -hmm. this feeling. This is a universal feeling. In fact, two of the most famous ones who, who expressed imposter syndrome were Maya Angelou, who's a famous poet and playwright. When she wrote her first book, she said, I wonder if this is the moment where they will realize that I'm running a game on them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Albert Einstein actually said, he described himself as an involuntary swindler whose work did not deserve the attention it was getting. So even these two are, and, mm -hmm. and so many more, are experiencing this feeling like, I don't belong here. Like, this is not worthy of the attention. But isn't, isn't life in general a little bit of a hustle? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And this is the thing, is that when you look at the backstory of those who experience this the most, you see a lot of criticism or critiquing, right? So constant. So especially if you belong in a job where there's, it's necessary for you to constantly critique in order mm -hmm. to get it just right. So there's that perfectionism, right? Or if you grew up in a household where you were verbally reprimanded for not getting it just right, or it's like, well, you did an okay job, but like, look at all these areas where you got mm -hmm. it wrong. Then you take over and start editing your performance in that way. And so it feels as though you never quite get there. And I have actually people, a lot of people in my circle who are super talented and they just whip back the curtain on this thing that they can do and you, you never knew because they never said anything. And when you mm -hmm. compliment, they're like, wow, you are an amazing artist. The feeling, my daughter's like this actually, she's an incredible artist, she's 15. Mm -hmm. And, and when, it, when you tell her, like, you're a great artist, she's, um, it's almost like, uh, you know, she's right. automatically going to the areas where she knows mm -hmm. that she, she didn't get quite where her standard is. She's flawed in her own mind, but other people don't see her as flawed. Oh, for sure, yeah. right? The talent is, way, she's, she's out-talented me, for sure. Yeah. You know, I'm 47, she's 15. Mm -hmm. She out-talented me, talented me when she was, like, nine years old. Mm -hmm. But for her, it's like, okay, the standard I know in my mind is here. And so you have to watch. And then a lot of people who have this going on will choose career paths mm -hmm. that are super uh, that require a lot of them they will just take everything that they have mm -hmm. and then some and so it gives them this constant reason to reinforce their relationship with imposter syndrome and to feel as though you know I'm not quite there I just people don't realize if they got a little bit too close to me mm -hmm. they would recognize that I'm, I'm I'm running a game like my I'm aunt. still <laughs> saying that after 40 years right exactly that's that and that's you don't want to see me in the editing room <laughs> It's never, never completely right. And I've seen this. I yeah. can attest to this. So that yeah. that's really helpful for people to understand that. Mm -hmm. It's like the most accomplished people are actually still running that voice inside yeah. of themselves. And so if you can actually recognize the voice, and some people will name it, like the voice that's the constant editor, um, there, and I can't give her proper um, credit, but there was someone who said that it's like having a crappy best friend in your head all the time just saying mean things to you, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, you got it this time, but are you going to be able to do it again, <laughs> right? Or, oh, I can't believe you made it. Like, they, they don't realize how, how little credit you actually deserve here, right? That right. kind of thing. So it's, again, it's this knowledge of yourself from the inside and then comparing yourself against those who have, have achieved success and mm -hmm. look as though they did not go through the struggles that you have mm -hmm. right and so each and every one of us have this part of ourselves that is that we look back on with shame regret you know these compulsions and we don't display those for the world is the thing and mm -hmm. so that it creates this gap from the time that we're children of like them and then me Right. right, them and me. Right? Right, right. And so when you go into an arena, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to get a promotion, there's this feeling of like, 
not enoughness that pre presents with you. And if you're not careful, you can actually keep yourself from going for opportunities that are really good for you, trying out for roles or, you know, um, interviewing for, for roles that you would really excel at because there's a, the, that voice, that editor within you mm -hmm. that is telling you, no, not, not you. you. Watch, did I ask you if you watched Suits on Netflix? You did, yes. Have you watched it yet? I haven't yet, no. A lot of what you're talking about is in those characters. Yes. They're so high-powered attorneys, and they are just on top of their game, but behind the scenes, they're a mess. Yeah, and this is not just with suit. Like, it's yeah. everybody. It really mm -hmm. literally is everyone. If you get close to anyone mm -hmm. who's doing big things, you might be surprised at all the cracks and crevices and all the imperfections and how much hard work and how much is going on inside of their heads mm -hmm. that actually feels a little less than perfect, right? Right. And that's just the human condition. Like, it's funny. Sometimes I'll meet people and they go, and you actually laugh when you're on the news desk. You're serious. <laughs> so I'm going, well, I can't open up the newscast with, in our top store today, there was a murder in Terrebonne Parish. And right. Like, start laughing. <laughs> exactly. So I guess you, everybody saw the morphs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, the thing about it is, like, the more that you can talk about it, the more that you can actually get to know people that you mm -hmm. look at as, like, okay, they don't struggle. They don't struggle mm -hmm. like I do, right? Mm -hmm. The more that you can start to see that, like, we're actually all connected, that you are talented, you're worthy, you're capable, you belong, right? These are all experiences that someone suffering from imposter syndrome feels like they're sitting at a table with friends and even feel like if, the, if these friends knew, if they got too close to me, they wouldn't want me at this table. You know who's pretty authentic? That... Uh, I must say, it comes to mind, Bobby A. Bear. Oh, oh, yes. What you see is what you get. Oh, yes, and that's refreshing, right? Yeah. That's why Bobby yeah. A. Bear. Like people love Bobby A. Bear because mm -hmm. it is like you're actually getting a peek behind the curtain. Like there's no, right. there's no front, right? There's no performance there that you have to get around. It's mm -hmm. like what you see is what you get, and people love that. It, it gives them selves. People give themselves permission to be authentic in the presence of someone like that. All right, Debbie. Great topic. Can't wait. What's the uh, next one? The next one is going to be on resilience. All right. Cool deal. Yes. Perfect. All right. There you have it. Debbie Cox, DeNova. And we'll be back next week with Good Vibes.